I guess speaking of influence, I watched this documentary last night. I've been wanting to watch this documentary. I think it only came out like a week or two ago. Um, it is the Look at Me documentary about X X X Tentacion um, on Hulu, and it mm-hmm. was crazy. Um, I, have you? Do you know much about X, or did you listen to much of his music? Uh, no, not really. Do you know like, who he is? I know who he is, and like I've heard a couple of his songs, but I'm not. I don't know him too well. Wasn't ever okay. like, too big of a fan, I guess. Okay, so he he uh, basically was a underground. He started as an underground rapper uh, down in south southern Florida, and uh, basically like when soundcloud rappers were kind of being uh becoming a larger thing in like 2016 2017 around there uh, yeah like 15 probably 14 to 16 um and so he like moved out and uh started making um making music uh at a very young age and got involved in some criminal stuff at one point or another um, but he, he, uh, yeah, so he, he's from South Florida, SoundCloud rapper. I mean, I feel like most people that listen to this will at least know the name. Um, but he, uh, he ended up dying in 20, J- June 18th of 2018 at the age of 20. Um, and, uh, he, he got shot and was robbed. And I remember when it happened, uh, seeing stuff on YouTube, people talking about it. Uh, I think I knew who he was at the time. I hadn't listened to a lot of his music. And um, after hearing his story more, it got me more intrigued to find out who he was a bit and listen to his songs. And uh, a very, uh, very complicated person. He definitely had a um, interesting uh, past. I know he had some criminal allegations that he, I didn't realize he was still up against at the time of his death, um, that he was still dealing with legally in Florida. But, um, he, I I think he was like one of the most blown up rappers at the time and had probably one of the most devout fan groups for, uh, that like, uh, time through social media because of, um, Twitter and Instagram and everything he posted and he would talk to his fans and DM them personally and do a bunch of stuff. So he had a, a very devout fan group, even when he was, uh, reasonably small before he blew up. Mm -hmm. Um, the song that did blow up for him originally was look at me, the name of the documentary, which is like a screamo punk, uh, rap, um, which, uh, the man's character was definitely very complex uh, and you could tell that through his past he was like fighting demons in himself trying to he, he with what everybody was saying in the documentary uh close friends his mother uh aunts and uncles not uncles but his aunt um he he had a very rough time I guess dealing with his emotions and understanding uh himself and he put that into his music and he took that out in a form of anger so that's one reason why he originally um kind of blew up and got uh, um attention originally on the internet was from videos of him like fighting people and get, getting into fights in public and being recorded and doing stuff like that and then then it was associated with his music and kind of getting attention. And I mean, Mm. it's not the best way to get attention considering it's like negative publicity, but like everybody always says it, like it doesn't matter if it's negative or positive publicity, it it still gets you attention, Mm -hmm. which is true. But he ended up realizing what like he, he grew out of it eventually. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you can kind of see it through his music. Like some of his first 
songs were definitely very um aggressive and um angry and like like you can see within like three years how much he had changed as a person just listening through um his music list where it went from a very rage induced music to like an r&b love songs to um uh like a positive music just dealing with emotion and and like i didn't know this but when he was six seven, 17 he ended up in prison for almost a year oh, dang. Uh, he was stuck in jail and that was all, all like that was around the time that he actually blew up was when he was in jail and some of the reasons was because of his fan base because i guess from one of his songs drake took his flow and his fans caught on and then it started blowing up on social media where fans were like saying like drake's a fraud he's stealing like this is what this music's from and all this and all 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 this stuff when he first blew up and i think it was from look at me and a few other of his songs that were released while he was in prison when he came out he was like uh i guess more of an actual celebrity and he ended up getting some music deals and uh start blowing up more in the mainstream like getting top top songs um in the country that's crazy yeah i mean he was doing all this at like 18 19 years old and um so i i did definitely come into his music a little late and afterwards i i definitely related to a lot of his music like it it hit me at a very very deep level and it's and i think that's one reason why his fan base was so dedicated to him was because a lot of people could relate to the music he was um making and um i I think everybody realized that even around him knew that one it was good for him when he was making music mentally but um at the same time he just had such a large impact on the community he he had formed that um when he did end up dying uh they basically had i I think part of it was an open funeral okay okay so sorry for that little intermission noah's laptop died (laughs) um so back to uh that documentary and x so he i don't know so i kind of found him like i said a little little later after uh, around his passing and I started listening to his music um and they, they were still able to re- uh, release several records after he passed just from music he had worked on and um I know he had a controversial past with uh, some um oh domestic violence and stuff like that and and I think he was struggling to even own up with that on his own like that's the, that's some of the legal charges he was um up against in court like before he passed he was looking i think within several days he, he was still having to go to trial there for a while and deal with certain things where he was looking up to possibly 20 years between uh certain things he's he did in his past um but uh he i don't know he was definitely a he had his own issues but he definitely was kind of like a a light in the dark for a lot of people and that was the cool thing that i think his mother realized that even after his death for his funeral um i think it was they kind of had it as an open funeral where um fans in the area and people he's known um for a long time and uh were able to actually come to the funeral and it wasn't just like immediate family um just because they were such a big part of who he was and he had such a large impact on their lives um and i mean he he definitely died uh way too young uh i mean the i think that was the thing that when i found out about it and i kind of looked into some of his music and him as a person and he had started posting different stuff on social media before he died i think the thing that kind of hurt me the most in the whole situation was 
he he passed away like within six months to where he was starting to kind of change his life for the better um and he had changed the way he was dealing with stuff um internally and was overall becoming a a more positive person um with the things he was dealing mm-hmm. with and for his for his fan base um he kind of like opened his eyes to what he was doing and realized that this isn't the right image that he needed to uphold and kind of was changing himself and that was the thing that I was like disappointed the most was he wasn't able to kind of live out the life he was trying to at that point or at least not uh it, yeah. it, it wasn't able to finish that out and then not only that but he was a uh, um he was going to be dad uh he his son was born 8 months after he he was killed so he he didn't even get to uh meet meet his son either which was which was terrible uh in itself He's, it's crazy he still has such a large impact on music and people i think which i didn't know this but at the end of the documentary last night which i recommend anybody watching uh what recommend anybody to to watch it, it was really cool interesting insight on someone that kind of changed music at, at that time heavily um like his last song or last album that he i think released technically after he passed but he had worked on that year uh question mark like that's just the i don't know if you've seen that album cover but that is the most viewed album listened to album ever on spotify still like it's the number one album ever a hip-hop album ever ever recorded um that's crazy which which is ridiculous because like he's a big name but then at the same time it's like uh it's not a name that everybody knows like it's not uh drake it's not little wayne it's not i don't know post malone like it and it it's still been number one most listened to album ever 